بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله brothers and sisters and friends السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The topic I'm going to address is is atheism unnatural? Is the belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala natural? And the way I want to address this is to let you know that we have many good arguments for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many. For example, even the Qur'an addresses positive arguments for His existence. In chapter 52, verse 35 to 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us logical explanations, logical possible explanations to explain things that begin to exist, whether it's the human being or the entire cosmos. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, essentially, did it come from nothing? Did it create itself? Was it created by something else created? Or was it created by something uncreated? And we know the best logical explanation for things that began, for things that emerged, things that are makhluq, that were created, that are muhdath, that came into being, the best logical explanation is that it was created by something uncreated. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the argument, but I want to let you know that we do have positive arguments for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cosmological argument, the argument from consciousness, the argument from design, the argument from cognition, the argument from morality, the argument from dependency. Many arguments for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But my job here, I believe today, is to give you intellectual sakina. Intellectual tranquility. And I'm going to say this very clearly. You don't need any arguments for the existence of Allah. You don't need any inductive, deductive, philosophical, logical, empirical, scientific arguments for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm going to argue, the minute you reject Allah, is the minute that you reject the real world is real. Let me repeat. The minute you reject the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the minute that you reject the real world is real. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a self-evident truth. I repeat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a self-evident truth. A self-evident truth by definition is a truth that doesn't require any evidence because it's true by its own self. And let me give you some examples of self-evident truths. Number one, the existence of other minds. I know, self-evidently speaking, that other minds exist. It's not only my mind, but I know you have a mind. But you can be a zombie. <laughs> After all, maybe you're just a biological robot. Maybe I'm just in the matrix and I haven't taken the red or the blue pill. So the point here is, brothers and sisters, there are some self-evident truths we know are true by their own selves. Another self-evident truth is that the universe is very old. It's about 13.7 billion years old. But it can be only 5 minutes old. After all, maybe this universe started 5 minutes ago. But it was created for you to have 18 years of memory. And you're thinking, but wait, I remember when I was a child. But maybe those memories were just put into you five minutes ago. Another self-evident truth, brothers and sisters, is that we trust our minds. Our minds are trustworthy. We look into the universe and the universe is rationally understood. We can understand it in a rational way. Because we have rational minds. But... What evidence do we have to prove that we should trust our minds? It's a self-evident truth. Another self-evident truth, brothers and sisters, is that this real world is real. For example, this iPhone 5S is real. It doesn't exist just in my mind. It exists external to my brain. But we have no evidence, brothers and sisters, to believe that this iPhone 5S is outside of your head is outside of your skull. What evidence do we have? Someone proved to me this iPhone 5S is actually real in that it's outside of your brain, outside of your mind. Prove it to me. 
you can touch it and feel it. But this touching and this feeling could just be in here. Someone else thinks that this phone is outside of my brain and my mind. But that somebody else telling me that the phone is outside of my mind can just be in my mind. After all, brothers and sisters, maybe your brain is on the moon and there's an alien with metal probes in your brain making you think and making you feel what you're thinking and feeling right now. Point is this. Point is this. You have zero, zero evidence to prove that this iPhone 5S is outside of your skull and outside of my skull outside of your thoughts, ideas, outside of your mind. But it's not a problem, because it's self-evidently true. And the irony is, the whole of science is based on this self-evident truth, that there are things outside of our brain, outside of our minds that are actually real. The whole of science is based on something that you can't prove. It's based on this self-evident truth. And I'm going to argue, the minute you reject Allah, is the minute you reject the real world is real, is the minute you reject that this iPhone is outside of my brain. Because Allah is a self-evident truth, and so is the fact that the real world is real, it exists outside of my mind, outside of my brain. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the messengers said, is there any doubt in the creator of the heavens and the earth? Is there any doubt? It's a self-evident truth. And I'm going to link this to the fitrah in a moment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a self-evident truth. The real world being external to our minds is a self-evident truth. Rejecting Allah is like rejecting the real world is real. Now, this is why if you say you're an atheist, and you deny Allah, you have to deny that this phone is outside of your mind. That the real world doesn't really exist. Now there are some objections, three major objections I want to address so you understand this very well. Objection number one. Some atheists would argue, hey, if you believe in Allah, if you believe in the Creator, then I believe in the spaghetti monster. I believe there was a spaghetti monster and he has huge meatballs for eyes and he created the universe. Yes, the spaghetti monster. <laughs> the grand fairy maybe, or even the great pumpkin created the universe. Or as Bertrand Russell, the grandfather of neo-atheism said, the flying teapot. And this is the point. They think that the belief in Allah is equivalent to these beliefs. But this is fundamentally wrong for three major reasons. Three major reasons, brothers and sisters. Number one, the belief in the spaghetti monster, the belief in the grand pumpkin, the belief in the grand fairy are culturally bound. They come from culture. They're not cross-cultural. The belief in a self-evident truth is not a product of culture. It's something that transcends culture. This is why everyone in any nation, from any culture, in any ethnicity, in any part of the globe, is going to believe the real world is outside of their minds. But the concept of the, of the spaghetti monster is culturally bound. It's a product of culture. Number two. The idea of the spaghetti monster requires information transfer. You don't understand the spaghetti monster from your own internal experience. Someone has to tell you, like a mad atheist for example, Hey, I believe in the spaghetti monster, right? That's information transfer. You have to come from a culture that teaches you the concept of monsters. Or you have to come from a western culture that understands Italian cooking, spaghetti. And these come to you via information transfer. But the belief in self-evident truths, 
You don't require no information transfer. You understand it from your own internal experience. For example, the belief in the creator of everything that exists is not taught to you. You understand this from your own internal awareness. Causality, supernatural causality. This is why anthropologists and sociologists, they say, even if you took atheist children and put them on a desert island, they would believe something outside of their physical reality created that physical reality. The third point is that the belief in the spaghetti monster is not foundational. What does foundational mean? It doesn't answer questions and doesn't create a coherent world view. All the spaghetti monster does is just create a few laughs here and there. But the idea of self-evident truths, they actually answer questions. For me, for example, to believe that the real world is external to my brain, it actually answers questions about my world and the world that I live in. It actually helps science progress and develop into a coherent world view. Similarly, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in a creator, is a foundation for many answers, such as why things happen. It answers, for example, the question of conscious emergence. How can consciousness emerge in a physical reality when consciousness is fundamentally non-physical, that we have inner subjective experience? There is a subjective experience of Hamza eating a strawberry, but no one can understand what it's like for Hamza to actually eat a strawberry. You may understand what it's like for you to eat a strawberry, but you can never access what it's like for Hamza to eat a strawberry. So the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of a creator, of all of our being, answer those, answers those problems. So the point here is, you can't throw the atheist cliche and say, oh, God is not a self-evident truth. If he's a self-evident truth, then the spaghetti, spaghetti monster is a self-evident truth. We know this is not true because the spaghetti monster is culturally bound. It's based on information transfer and it's not foundational. Because self-evident truths are not culturally bound. Self-evident truths do not require information transfer. And self-evident truths are foundational. They provide answers and they actually create a coherent worldview. The second contention, some atheists may say, hold on a second, didn't we once believe that the world being flat is a self-evident truth? And we know as we progress scientifically, we know that self-evident truth is not true anymore. Now I don't want to get into a big discussion about self-evident truths and if we can deny them based on science. Let's ignore that for a moment. But let's accept what they say. Yes. Maybe the world being flat was a self-evident truth and it changed because of scientific progress. So what? Big deal. No problemo. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as we say in Britain. Because of this simple fact, this is talking about things that we can observe. We can observe via mathematics or via scientific structures or via imagery or via exploration that actually the world is now around and this is based on observation so maybe future observations can deny what we once thought was true but that's not a problem for God's existence because God by its very definition is not observed he's outside of the universe if I made this lectern or this podium do I become the podium I'm distinct and disjoined from the podium. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created the universe, He's distinct and disjoined of the universe. As Ibn Taymiyyah, the 14th century theologian, he said that creation is distinct and disjoined from the Creator. As Allah says in the Quran, Laysa kimithlihi shay. There is nothing like unto Him. So, by definition, Allah is not observed. So, how can you say a future observation? can deny that which is not observed. Contradiction. Again, I repeat. How can you say a future observation or a set of observations can deny that which is not observed? That's impossible. Because all you could do with observations is just prove what you've observed, not prove what you haven't observed. And this relates to the whole theory of knowledge called empiricism, which science bases itself on. And empiricism is that you can't have knowledge unless it's via experience. 
direct or indirect observation. So how can the theory of knowledge that requires observation to form conclusions deny the thing that is not observed? It's impossible, it's outside of its scope. You need to use another method of reasoning. So this is why this contention is false. No evidence in the future can ever deny Allah's existence. No observed evidence can ever deny Allah's existence. This means no matter what you learn in school in science, it can never deny Allah's existence. It can only do two things. Number one, shut up about the matter. It could just stay silent. Or number two, suggest some evidence that we could infer to actually come to the conclusion Allah exists. But it can never ever deny that which cannot be observed because it only relies on observations. The third and final contention, brothers and sisters, is this. Hey, Mr. Muslim, aren't self-evident truths supposed to be universal? Everybody agrees with them. But there are around 750 million atheists in the world, 50% of China, 40% of Germany, right? Even in Saudi Arabia, apparently there are 6% atheists. And it's growing. And they're saying there's 750 million atheists in the world. This shows that actually God's existence is not self-evidently true because self-evident truths are supposed to be universal. This is wrong. Self-evident truths don't have to have a democracy. You don't have to have 100% voting on this matter. You don't. You can have individualized self-evident truths. For example, I believe... The lady I call my mother gave birth to me. I have no evidence. Nor do you, by the way. You don't have a home DNA test kit. After all, she could be my auntie. Or she could be my older sister. Who knows, right? Or she could be my guardian, my parent guardian. Maybe she adopted me. But I know self-evidently that is individualized within me that she is the one that gave birth to me. But for you, she may be my auntie, she may be my grandma, she may be my older sister. It's not self-evident to you. So self-evident truths can be individualized. However, I would argue that God's existence is universal. If you look at the whole of history of mankind, the majority of human beings actually believed in the Creator. Just because some didn't, it doesn't mean it's not universal anymore. Because if that's the case, then you shouldn't believe the real world is external to your brain because some philosophers are called idealists. Meaning that everything is just in your mind. There is no real world. So from this perspective, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, intellectual sakina, intellectual tranquility, nobody, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Professor Krauss, Professor whoever, Fulan, Fulana, Khalas. If they bring you scientific evidence, they could never deny Allah's existence. If they give you any contentions, they could never deny His existence. Because the minute you say Allah doesn't exist, is the minute you're saying the real world is not real, it's not external to our minds, and you need this for the whole of the scientific worldview. Finally, let me just end on the theological Islamic concept that this concept itself that we're talking about, this concept of self-evident truths, relates to the idea of the fitrah. In a hadith that can be found in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said that every human being is born in a state of fitrah. The word fitrah comes from the triliteral Arabic stem, fatara, which you have words like fatrun and fatarahu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created something within you to acknowledge Him and to worship Him and to affirm His oneness. And it's society that deviates us away from this natural state. There's a natural state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created within us to acknowledge Him. And this is supported, brothers and sisters, by sociological evidence, psychological evidence, and anthropological evidence. Let me go to the sociological evidence. There's a professor called Professor Barrett. He did a study on children. And he did a long study. And he discussed their behaviors and their statements. And he realized that these children are upon something that he called natural religion. And what this natural religion was, is that this universe 
couldn't have been created by something in the universe. This universe must have been created by something outside of the universe. And children realize it can't be a human being. It must be something supernatural. Allahu Akbar. Second point, the psychological evidence. Professor Olivera Petrovich, she's a psychologist of religion. She did various studies and she concluded that the natural psychological state of the human being is to believe in God. The unnatural state is to believe in atheism, which means atheism is almost like a forced psychology on the human being. Third point, the anthropological evidence. If you look at even atheist China and Russia, what did you see? You saw the instinct of worship as the brother spoke about earlier, coming through, bursting through. Because they had big statues of Stalin and Mao, their leaders, and they would sanctify them and revere them and be at awe. Also, they would worship ideas. Like in communism, you have dialectic materialism. It's almost like wahi for them, revelation for them. And this instinct is coming through. You even see this instinct in atheist societies. Every time I speak to atheists on a street level, they're like, oh, you have to read Richard Dawkins' book on chapter 2, second paragraph, third line. This sounds like religion. Surah Baqarah, verse 23. Do you see my point? They have these big gatherings, the World Atheist Alliance, the World Atheist Convention. They have their leaders and their books. And I always thought that atheism was a non-profit organization. <laughs> so this actually supports the idea of the fitra. That's something the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said 1400 years ago. Allahu Akbar. And therefore, brothers and sisters, when you look at evidence in the universe, whether it's philosophical, mathematical, inductive, deductive, logical, it's just there to act as a trigger to wake up what's self-evidently true, which your fitra already knows. So from this perspective, brothers and sisters, the minute somebody says, I am an atheist, is the minute they've denied reality. Denying Allah, denying reality. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, my name's iPhone 6 Plus. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in fairy tales that some creature with intelligence created me. It's good.